So today I wanna to make some peanut butter, but I wanna also use this opportunity to kind of test the limits of the human tongue. So our tongue is made of a bunch of different little receptors. These detectors are spread out on our tongue with certain size spacing. So if a particle is smaller than that spacing, our tongue shouldn't be able to taste this. And this is one of the reasons why chocolate is ground so smooth, so you can't actually detect the grain size and grit of the chocolate. And this is done using specialized tools. And today I wanna to try to find that limit by using some basic tools such as a food processor and also just doing this by hand, as well as some new tools I just picked up recently. And we're gonna, I'm gonna taste each one of these things and try to find out where this limit is. But first, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com slash flavorlab and use code flavorlab to get a steep discount on two years of VPN service along with a gift. And who doesn't love gifts? All right, let's make some peanut butter. All right, so first let's start off with our peanuts. Now, just for reference, these peanuts are about two to three millimeters across. And I'm gonna be using Spanish peanuts here because they're a little bit more oil filled and that'll help make a good peanut butter. I'm also gonna be roasting each of these peanuts for about 20 minutes before attempting to grind them. Um, I'm gonna be roasting them at like 350 Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. Now, the reason for doing this and the best timing and roasting and stuff will be the focus of an upcoming video where I play around with kind of burning peanut butter and seeing how that goes. But for today, let's focus on just grinding up peanuts. Let's start with the coarsest and also something quite familiar on this channel, which is a mortar and pestle. I'm simply just gonna toss in some peanuts into the mortar and pestle along with some salt and just begin pounding for three minutes. Just keep pounding and keep pounding. And about three minutes later, I ended up with this. Now the end product is a little rough and I don't even know if I'd call this peanut butter because it's not quite there. Now I have tried to make peanut butter this way in the past and I spent a lot longer than three minutes and it didn't really get much better. I mean, it got a little better, but not much, much better than this. But we're just gonna use this as a first step and kind of a touchstone to kind of understand what the grind size is of the peanut butter that we have. Now that we have this paste, we wanna find a way to quantify how fine its grind is. Now there's various ways of doing this, but I'm simply just gonna put a sample of peanut butter under a digital microscope. And then I'm just gonna look at this sample and, and kind of just find the size this way. However, the problem is that peanut butter is a little bit opaque. So in order to see what's going on, I'm gonna take a small amount of the peanut butter and I'm gonna dilute it with some oil. Now peanut butter is essentially just a paste of peanuts floating in their own oil along with salt. So by adding some oil, we can kind of space the peanuts out a little bit farther from each other, making them a little bit easier to measure. Once under the microscope, the cool thing is that this digital microscope is calibrated and that allows me to measure the size of the actual peanut pieces directly. So now I have the sample under the microscope. So what are we looking at here? Now, as I said, I, I diluted it with oil and this is just to give all the particles a little bit of breathing room. Now there's a bunch of super tiny particles that make up a majority of this peanut butter. These are way too small for my microscope to detect. However, they really don't matter. What we wanna taste are the larger boulders of peanut that are floating. And that's what actually gives us the taste of the actual solids. So now I adjusted the microscope and now we can really see three things here. We have the peanut skins, which are kind of these brown pieces. Next, you can see these crystals, which are actually our salt that we've added. And lastly, we have our peanuts, which kind of look like little beige blobs. Now, the cool thing is, as I said, this is a calibrated microscope, which allows me to measure the size of these blobs. And I went through and measured the size of every particle I could see on the screen for a random section of the peanut butter at a zoom level where several of the largest pieces could be resolved. So then I measured each of these pieces within the sample and then plotted this in a histogram and to kind of get a sense of how large the particles were and what the distribution was. And for the mortar and pestle, that turned out that we had a kind of average particle size for, of about 600 microns, which is a good starting point. How did it taste? All right, so I have the one I made with the mortar and pestle. Let's see how it actually tastes and what the texture actually is like. Maybe not surprisingly, it's, um, it's quite grainy. Um, it does taste kind of like peanut butter, but it's still, there is something weird with the texture not being exactly right. It doesn't quite taste like peanut butter. It tastes a little bit like, I don't know, just ground up peanuts. Let's see if we can do a little better. All right, so I measured a large chunk size, about 600 microns, which is not really the best. Now, I'm not sure if I pounded it for longer, I would have maybe gotten a smaller size, but I really didn't have kind of all day to do this. So let's move on to the next method, which is a lot easier. And we're gonna start with another common way of making peanut butter, which is using a food processor. Now I'm gonna be using two cups of roasted peanuts in the food processor, and I'm gonna add about one tablespoon of peanut oil which in retrospect may have been a little too much. Maybe half of that would have worked as well. But I'm just gonna put the peanuts into the food processor and just, you know, turn it on and let the nuts keep grinding until they're smooth. I also kind of salted to taste, which for me turned out to be about one teaspoon of salt. You can add a little bit more if you want to. 
keep processing this until we have a nice smooth paste. Now I do have to say this might seem a little liquidy for peanut butter, but this is actually due to the grinding. It kind of heated everything up uh, during the grinding process. So it's actually kind of warm, but it definitely did solidify as I let this cool down to room temperature. So, so now we need to measure how fine the grind of the food processor did. So just like before, I'm gonna place a small amount into a glass and dilute it with some oil and place it under the microscope to measure. Now here, we can see that the pieces are a lot smoother and there's a lot less kind of big bouldery chunks in here, you know, but we see the same things we saw from before. We see the pieces of the skin, even a few salt crystals. Now, as before, I, I quickly measured all of the pieces that I could kind of resolve and I got something on the order of about 230 microns or almost three times finer than the mortar and pestle, which was good, but how did it actually taste? All right, so I have here the food processor. You can see it is still quite grainy good but you can definitely taste that there's some grittiness to this and I don't actually mind that and I actually like peanut butter that has this so if you just want to be able to make peanut butter for yourself this is a pretty good and easy way of doing it although it's not as quite as smooth as what you might get from a commercial source so let's see what else we can do all right now we're gonna really attempt to break the taste barrier so I decided to pull out the big guns and and from your guys' support, I was actually able to buy something I kind of never dreamed that I'd be able to own. But speaking of support, I'm a fan of hacking taste buds, but what I'm not a fan of is people hacking my data. Using a VPN like NordVPN can help keep your data secure. When I was living in Germany, I was really frustrated by the fact that I didn't have access to the shows that you can access here in the US. But by using a VPN like NordVPN, I was able to actually watch the content and keep up with it in real time. So I didn't fall behind for my friends here in the US. Right now, NordVPN is offering a special discount for Flavor Lab viewers. You can get two years of NordVPN plus a special gift, which who doesn't like free gifts? You can get all of that using my special link, nordvpn.com slash Flavor Lab and use the code FLAVORLAB to be able to make sure that you get that special extra gift. I really like to thank the sponsor NordVPN for providing a great service and sponsoring this video, allowing me to do stuff like this. All right, let's get back to the peanut butter. It's very clear we're gonna need to do something special here if we wanna get the peanut butter fine enough for us not to be able to kind of taste the individual peanuts with our, with our tongue. So I was able to pick up this special tool which will turn these peanuts into almost a liquid. Now to break the peanuts down to as smooth as possible, I'm going to be using a wet grinder or a wet mill. Now these things have stone mills that rotate and smooth out the particles to an extremely small size. So I just tossed in some peanuts along with some salt and you just press the button and let it go. This thing basically is just crushing the peanuts over and over, kind of like how we did with the mortar and pestle, but it's doing it in a mechanized way. So I was able to let this thing go for 45 minutes in the wet mill and I turned it off and look at that, so smooth. I didn't even have to add any oil to this. The mill was able to crush the peanuts small enough to where they were able to release their own oil. And again, it was a little bit warm, so as I kind of pull this into the bowl, it's, it's a little bit runny, but it did solidify after it kind of got brought down back to room temperature. So now let's look at this wonderful stuff under the microscope. And the particle size here now is completely tiny. And I once again measured everything that I could, graphed the counts in a histogram, and you can see that the average value is it's about 140 microns, a little bit less, which is about 100 microns smaller than what we were able to get with the food processor. That's not nothing. So how did it taste? All right, so I have the one that I made with the wet mill, or the wet grinder, and you know, it's really, really smooth. It's, it's almost looks like caramel or something like this. It's not, it doesn't even look like peanut butter anymore at this point. And as we saw under the microscope, it is quite small. So how, the question is, how does it taste? Let's see. It's completely smooth. I cannot taste any graininess whatsoever. Um, there are small few pieces of peanut that just kind of didn't quite grind or be part of the process. So every once in a while you see one of these pieces, but for the, for the rest of it, it's completely smooth. And if it wasn't for that like dry feeling that you get when you have peanut butter in your mouth, you know, that really like, why peanut butter and jelly sandwich really needs like milk to go with it. If it wasn't for that, you wouldn't even know that this was really a peanut butter. I mean, like there's no like texture whatsoever. So I think we did it. We accomplished being able to make, uh, we've been able to hack the taste buds and be able to get this to be below this threshold. Well, consulting literature, apparently things will start to begin to taste less like solids and more like liquids you know, along a gradient, as long as the particle size is somewhere between two to 230 microns, which explains the vast difference between the perception of the wet grinder and the food processor, even though the particles from the wet grinder are only half as small. The food processor grind is just on the cusp of kind of 
being perceived as a liquid. And of course it's an average, so some half start to be perceived as a liquid and the other half kind of that grainy gritty texture. And by being able to move the whole average of the distribution down by 100 microns, we're much more in that gradient of being perceived as kind of a liquid. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was interesting to you. And if you do, please consider checking out my other videos. And once again, I'd like to thank the sponsor NordVPN for supporting this video. All right, see you guys next week. Bye.